so much. So this is how we usually do the show live at home. So me and a few mates will collectively gather on the interweb and usually go on Discord unless something happens to Discord, which that happens last week, and we'll switch to Skype, which didn't sound good. So yeah. But well now it's different because I can't see my co-host and they are Private Genesis. G'day. And also Star Street. Hello everybody. So how do I put this? This is kind of strange, new and interesting in terms of how we're doing stuff. Usually you hear intro music and all the good stuff. We do some banterie jokes and whatnot. But now I I'm a lost for words. I have no idea what to do. Because I was just up there looking for a check to focus on something now. And now I'm just standing because I want to feel high. So um, I'm gonna ask you guys that the audience here. How are you all? <laughs> Riveting response. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so why well, how are you? I'm a bit cold, I didn't realize the AC was actually going to be this cool, and I'm missing my jacket. Yeah, it is cool, it is cool. Eh? Yeah, feeling a bit cold, but better than twice, because at least he left his jacket back at the hotel. For me, I left it back in Brunei, so yeah. <laughs> so here's an interesting fact. Um, all of us here are from different countries, like twice are from Australia, Malaysia, and uh, Stark is from Brunei, and well, if you take a look see at how all three of us are on this stage here right now, it's strange because three different people from different countries get together on stage. But after we do the normal things that we always do, we just talk about the news, but what about how to do that? It'll be interesting. So anywho, um, let's talk about the news. Anybody here is a big fan of Marvel? There's a few. Oh, are you DC fans? Like, do you like Superman things? Like, uh, oh, 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 a lot of Superman Shame fans. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, no, Superman's cool too. Not in the movie version though. But anywho, um, recently, uh, Robert Downey Jr., you know him, he plays Iron Man and also he plays some other characters like Sherlock. I do remember Sherlock. I, I do. No, I'm not really a Marvel fan, I'm a DC fan. Oh, okay, no problem then. So then you, um, he recently discovered the Broly Phantom and posted a picture of the Iron Pony armor. Really interesting. You know, I actually probably have gotten a... HDMI. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put it basically into the big screen. But you know what, no problem. You can just look at the show notes and this episode out. It's so riveting. So, how... Impressed are we on how um, shocked are we to see Robert here post this up? Not all that shocked. Really? Yeah. Well, he's had some Bernie or MLP related uh, posts in the past, like on Facebook. So I'm not particularly surprised. What was that? I actually yeah. thought it was fan art, the original. <laughs> That's someone else's posting. No, I, I don't remember that at all. Like, previously, he did see that. One or two uh, posts he's made in like last year that referenced the fandom and MLP. Alright, alright. Alright. So, we're in SuponyCon and the banner for the QD now is showing SuponyCon, so that's cool. And well, the panel before us, you saw people was on, so that's cool. And I think someone, yeah, that, that as a show, like, would you do a diamond girl impression? And she did it, and it was beautiful. But one thing on the news is, uh, it seems that the song for Will Make Our Mark, it seems that there's a verse that was removed for diamond girl. And if you go check the links in the show notes, um, it's a pretty really cool song, and it reveals a lot about her character like how she's going to change and whatnot, so that is cool. Yeah, I didn't get to listen to this until last night, during the last minute uh, backup on reading the news. It 
it's a fantastic verse, and I think the the song and the whole episode of Crusaders of the Lost Mark would have been infinitely better if they had left it in. They, they, after hearing it, it cheapens the, uh, the episode and the song, not to have it in there. Yeah, like, I feel that this kind of improves her character of I like how she can change for the future, but eh, maybe they left it because for album purposes, who knows? It makes, yeah. Maybe it's not just album purposes, but because maybe the part, the episode is having a bit of a time constraint because it is a quite a long song and there's a bit of a, what you call it, a, having a multiple songs in just one episode. It's like a musical episode. True, true. Like, I think the last time they did that was in Magical Mystery Cure. Yeah. That, that was way different. Right? Still no problem. So in this part here too, we have a lot of artists who draw ponies and you can buy their posters and whatnot and they're cool. Like, if I had more money, I'll buy, but since I'm almost flat broke, I can't. But I'm, I'm sure you guys here can, so please do, they really like your support. And talking about art, um, it seems that the Mother Pony Dragon on Desert Island is going to be appearing at the National Museum of America illustration. And the artist here, Mary Jane Dickens, is going to do a talk on her art and writing for the book, which is pretty cool. You don't get to hear that too often. A book about ponies and being in a very professional location being talked about. This is the first time I've heard about this book. I kind of want to read it, and I, I, I'm also surprised that uh, a, a national museum has decided to do a lecture series to cover something that is my little pony related, you know, without it being like 100 years old. Oh yeah, and the only time when a lecture would be visible is a pony convention, like what we're doing now. Yeah. What a lecture about to go. Oh, in my opinion, it just reminds me of something called the My Little Pony Art of Equestria, where they talk about the, the process of how the animation has been coming along from, from the beginning, from the stage where they started the, anim the design and all the storyboards and all this. And then, um, pretty much the work on how she write the book. Oh, yeah, like, this one is mostly about art and, yeah. I have no idea what they're going to talk about, the texture, I don't know, it's like anybody, like when is this, like August 26th, that's next week, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so if any of you guys are interested, you can head up there and attend the lecture. I think it's free to attend. But that doesn't say anything about your flight ticket to the state. So, yeah. It kind of, in a sense that you could say, um, Basically, the mind of the person who is writing this book, kind of thing. The author's mind. That will be in the way. And last one than this, two uh, years Freedom Festival happening at the Perry Center. This is a location, right? It's yeah, happening in like New York City and Beverly Hills. Yes. So they're going to show all of the Mighty Pony movies. Uh, that is. Film festival on the twenty third of September in the time. So they're going to go from T one to four in England. Let's go. So hey, more planning there, and that event will be on the twenty third of September, twelve p.m. to three p.m. and admission is free. So this is cool too, having your all this show being shown in a film festival. Well, at least they have a bunch of activities for kids, mm -hmm. free toys for the first 350 people. I wonder how many of those people are going to be like Bernie's and all the little kids in the South of Bernie. You know, probably half of it. You mean like this convention? <laughs> yeah, but like we're not taking any giveaway from people. Everyone has to pay for this. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but well, that's six years for this week. We kind of do things fast. 
So anyway, um, let's get into the meat of the panel here. And that is how I met my friends, um, Pi and Starker. So, with Pi, it's a pretty interesting story. We met through an online Skype group, right? Uh, yeah, we met for Pi and Daggett's Skype group. Mm -hmm. And this Skype group was all about gaming. Like, I do other things than this, I do play games. And if you hear me all the time, I do play Overwatch and this P82. Press stealth. <laughs> but um, during that time on Time Vegas game chat group, we were playing a lot of Civ. And the problem with Civ, you know, is that it's hard to get a game going on without any people. So I invited uh, Midnight Scribe from the Highland Burnies invited me in. Yeah, so we invited like you on, and we play, and then we play more games, and, well, I think the time that really changed was when I met the for my family vacation. Ah, yeah, fair enough for that. Yeah, and that was strange, like, how we met. Like, I remember a few months before, messaging you saying, hey, hi. I'm coming down to Perth. Want to meet? Yeah, I was ecstatic. I was like, yeah, I'll meet a new person. That's great. I think I'd already been on the show once at that point. I spoke, I don't remember. Yeah, but not, not too many times. Yeah. And well, we, we met. I, he brought me around with his car. And, well, things go on from there. And this is my point of view of how I met him. And what about you? How, you know me and stuff. Let's see. I, I just remember you were in Ty's group and then Midnight Trap kept getting me to watch the MBS show, uh, which did, I didn't actually start listening to until about a month or so before I ended up on the show. I didn't, I didn't, I marathoned about 50 episodes because I had nothing else to do. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying that you. Listen to all 50 episodes of like that? Uh, you had a lot more than 50 episodes at the time. It was just about 50 episodes in total I sat and just marathon the crew. Ah, so basically you spent 50 hours listening to us talk then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I played video games while I was doing that. Oh, okay. Multitasking. That's always good. And what else? Um, I think it was Lurking Cat who was the one that instigated me being on the show to begin with. Uh, because we joked about it, and then Logan Camp was the one that's like, you should totally be on the show. And then we, I, I put off being on the show for like, I think one or two weeks, so I was on the show with Logan Camp at the same time. Because she was so excited to be on the show with me on the show. Yeah, I do remember that. That was cool. Um, I wish I could have her on back, but he's a bit busy with um, life. That thing. Yeah. Life. And as time goes on, we kind of have the same interest in games and in other things, and it seems kind of interesting if you think about it. Yeah, we, we played a lot of PA2. Yeah, PA2, and, and a, I think a bit of Black for Dead? Yeah, I do remember Black for Dead. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Mike, Michael, uh, Man of Manical Game, was yeah. uh, wanted to play a lot of Black for Dead, but. Um, He's terrible at it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we ain't gonna say anything. I'm sure we all are terrible at some games. But with that, like I think that we, you came on and you, know, you just never left. Yeah, I I think at that point after you came to Perth and we met up and we spent like the afternoon hanging out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which was the only time that you had to spare for us to hang out when you were there. I started gradually showing up on the NBA show more and more often to the point where this past month I've been on the review show twice. Oh yeah. Um, due to some editing issues, I was going to be on the third time, but that had to be restricted down. I'm on. I, I'm on next week's review show, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that would be uh, my little point of friendship. This uh, friendship forever thirty-five. Yes, thank you. And yeah. then I'm going to be on 
September's review drug, I think. Yeah, that would be. Uh, uh, While well, Silver Cloud's on his vacation. Yeah, uh, that would be episode 8 of season 7. So, Jerry, you will be recorded soon enough. And start. How would an idea for you? Like, I remember you coming up to me last year, around um, February, I guess. Was it February? Not too sure, but I'm more because I think way back then was because I was going to TFE. I kind of know you were from back then. Where were you back then? Uh, that, that, that's the more interesting part because I don't know you, but you yeah. know me. Yeah. And some people might call that stalkerish. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when, I, when I met you like, for the first time, it was at um, TFE, was the day zero, you met up. You Talk, you told me your laptop, was it? Gaming laptop? No, it was actually this laptop. Just a laptop, not gaming laptop. No. I think it was the, was it the small laptop that I had? Yeah, that one. Oh, that one. Yeah, so you told it to me and, oh, it was kind of good. And I liked it, like, oh, this is cool, this is cool. But we didn't really get to hang out that much. So no. my memories of you were, you know, fuzzy. Easy at point. Fuzzy. Yeah. So, I do remember that, okay, um, Doc wanted to get us together, talk more, and he created his own group, right? No, actually that was my idea from the beginning, because I suffered from my first post-con depression when I went to, after, went to my TFE, yeah, because that is my first convention, and I had such a great time. So, kind of like, you know, it's me, and then this one tree, and this like, Charlie, and then we all had like we would like, hang out at this place and then we kind of like, you know, af after we left like, off, we kind of like, you know, I feel like there was a bit of something that wasn't there, you know. Like it feels a bit missing and I kind of want to continue to talk because, well, in fact, in my place, it's like we have a lot of difficulty having like like minded people to talk with, not to mention like those with our, who are veteran bronies. So it's kind of like, you know, I kind of want to talk more. So I created that group and at first it was a, just a, this normal talk group and then it eventually evolved into the gaming group. Yeah, and then we did more games and yeah, it became interesting. And from that point on, it just, well, we got to know each other, we talk more and, well, it just evolved to friendship. Like, friendship through this show. Like, and when I mean this show, it's not about the NBA show, I mean, the show that we all enjoy, which is my own friendship. So, this one I'm thinking like, okay, we all enjoy the show, like we enjoy the show a lot, and we all together from all across the world. Like I know a few drones from the States, uh, probably in Europe and whatnot, and even Asia. So to gather them all in one place, like this world, for example, is interesting, and honestly, if it's not for this on, I would be meeting five here for the second time in person. So, I have to say that this show is pretty magical. Yeah, I agree. And, yeah, what can I say? Like, I know you guys here are here for this con because you enjoy the show too. So, yeah. I can say anything much. I guess it's time to talk about how me and Star met, which was through the NBA show. Uh, I think it was only like two or three months ago, I was pulled onto an episode. You asked me if I wanted to be on an episode, and then when I come to the day, I'm like, all right, so it's just us. Is anyone else so going to have Wills on or anyone? You're like, no, my friend Star Street. I'm like, no idea who that is. And I think you, I, you've been on like a couple episodes at that point, yeah. I just didn't remember. Yeah. But I think since then we've been on... semi already. About <laughs> seven, maybe, I think about between five and seven episodes that, uh, together. And this is our first time meeting each other thanks to Seek Money Yeah. Uh, which I didn't actually recognize you at first. <laughs> How do you know him? That's the part. Like you never seen any pictures, you never seen anything else. Like, how? I think probably you could say that I know MBS was through the show, so pretty much that. 
I mean, I was like, I know, like I said, I know this show was back in 2003 years ago, I think. I think about 2014, because at that time, I think it was on, uh, was it Only Be Alive or was it Ever Free? I don't really remember. I think if you're talking about way back when, there would be I was on Pony Life. Yeah, I think it should be the Pony Bill Life. So I, it got me interested because of the fact that I think it popped up on the sh uh, was it on the show? I mean, on the question daily a few times? Yeah, well, it's been there for almost, well, regular basis, four or five years. Yeah, really, on the night we run up. But at that time, I was like, I didn't even know what NBA stands for. And then I did I think see some posts that say that they were a Malaysian podcast or something and at that time I was like oh, you know, it was kind of interesting but you know what, what Elisha has actually asked you from way back then and it might be a bit different right now oh yeah yeah I mean things would be a little different but still uh, way back when things were different yeah. things were different so anything else? no alright so uh, you might cut this short but I want to open up for QA and anybody got questions or anything like that? I had no idea but I lost it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how does the show start then? Well, so, um, how, the, how did it start then? And how did it start then? Because I wanted to do a book next week back when. And I didn't really have a topic, and I didn't really have much friends who had the same interests. Video games are hard because you need to know certain things or be good. Movies, you don't, you need to know your, how is that? What is that? You need to know your stuff, your storyline and whatnot. So you have your caps and certain things. So in 2012, I went for a local movie meetup, and there, we, there we. Oh, sorry. Um, the three of us are a bit different because after the show got established, and thank you, know, we've been doing this for, or I personally been doing it for five years now, and these two just came in this year. I came in this year. It was quite recent, actually. Yeah, I think that I was in last year. Uh, my first show because I was on the show before your trip to Perth, which was last year. So essentially, um, it was with a different group of friends and involved with Dan. Then, um, I, well, I had a friend, he had a DJT mic, I was interested, and he tried to make for something. That's something that never been released at all. I think Dan still has it. And that episode was terrible. Was it called the episode zero? Oh, no, 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 no. Episode <laughs> negative one. Yes, probably the negative one. Because oh, I did hear the origin, the first podcast on the yeah. website, and it was very interesting for all normal movies oh, then compared to now. That one was considered good. No, um, the episode was, no, the show back then was titled to be called The Heart Event. For veterans here who know what that means. Yeah. No. So, a few months later, I approached some people and we started recording on stock. Till one day, then he came up to me saying, Hey, can I be on this show? I know how to do iTunes. <laughs> and I said, I'll think about it. And because of him, the show is now on iTunes. And as for what can be going in English, um, I have to say that I don't know how to quit. I love doing the show every week, even though there's some kind of dirt. Like, for example, for this trip, I was supposed to record a video with uh, DSLR. I had the mic and all, but I was ready for this. Then, suddenly, my camera gave out. It actually died, and yeah, tough luck. But that didn't stop me. I improvise and I kept going. I find new things to improve and evolve. And the thing with doing this show is, if you're not enjoying it, why are you keeping doing it? Like I've been doing it for five years now, and obviously everything just ups and down. 
So you're, you just can keep going. If you're not enjoying, then stop. And anybody else? Any questions? I have a question. My right. mate was looking after my bags in the audience, and he's bugging off that my bags are still there. <laughs> now he owes me double because he left the window open in my car last week, and rain got in. <laughs> Why is that a question? I, I want to know where the hell he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> he's not in here, so he, he better be off to the toilet like for a massive emergency. Um, or he could be just ran out and did some food and not come back for a while. <laughs> Who knows? That make a difference. Uh, on the way here this morning, I was, I, I'm here with four other people I dragged from Australia. <laughs> Three of them abandoned me and one of the other ones in the hotel this morning. They got up and decided, no bugger, we're going to go to the, come here to see Podicon early and just left us sleeping. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look after those bags. Hey, that's going to take a crap somehow. <laughs> well, friendship is magic. <laughs> friendship is magic and a lot of terms. <laughs> Along the way. Indeed. Dan mentioned that you that you are about to hit the, uh, the longest running podcast for, for a brony podcast. How do you feel about that? So you asked, uh, I'm about to hit one. According to them, you are about to hit. You are about to be the longest running Brony podcast out there. How do you feel about that? Oh boy, uh, <laughs> how it is unbelievable. It's one of those things where you do this thing day in day out, expecting it to be a regular hobby thing, where you just, oh, I just want to do this for fun. And since you need to keep me up, why not, right? And hey, Silver Pills here to talk about movies with me. So why not right? That'll be fun. Suddenly, five years later, hey, I'm still doing this. I don't have a life. <laughs> well, maybe that life is there, just that who knows it will, where it went to. Oh yeah, true that, true that. I mean, um, with this show, five years running, I've met a lot of incredible people like Daniel, um, Charlie, Starker, and also Star, and also Frank and you. Every one of those people have their own stories to tell and it's interesting to see them grow involved and just be who they are and achieve their dreams. Like a few years ago, Dan came up to me saying, oh, let's go to Brody Park. And well, I didn't go but he went. Then Dan told me, I want to do a convention. And he did it, twice. Oh. I think it's three times, starting with the first TV. But then again, if I'm not mistaken, I hear that he actually has way more experience back then, even though before he started with TV. Like, he started, he's doing, like, help, and helping with the Singapore side convention or something? Yeah, it's quite right. Right. But still, he has the dream and I was there to see it. And what else for me? Uh, I got to talk to awesome people, like people from the show, people from. Some celebrities of the show, like uh, Black Griffin, uh, you know, Tombstone, even uh, Dr. Wilson or Will, Sakura Person, and people from the show. I got to talk to Michelle Cleaver, uh, Larson, everybody by Facebook and Amazon, and also Henry. So, this show has gotten me so many opportunities of awesomeness. And any more questions for me? No? I was going to say, we can talk about con experiences. I mean, we're at a con, and there are heaps of uh, MLB cons across the planet. We can talk about cons we've been to and whatnot. This is my personally my first uh, pony convention, because most of the ones in Australia have been a train wreck. <laughs> yeah, it is. You talk to any Australian that there is the the, the the hilarious tragedy of Sydney, which never started. Uh, Salvage Con, which pulled up the shipwreck that was Sydney. And then there's PonyCon uh, Australia, which has been promising to do a one final convention for about three years now, and it still hasn't hosted its final convention. Uh, 
which is why I've, I've been trying to get to travel and sit down to see Pony Dom and just come to other cons in general because I don't think that's happening. It is good to experience the proper convention. Somehow, yeah. we have to, right? But I know you've been to cons before. Like, um, or have been buying what convention or two would be uh, four? Uh, I think five is going to be this one. But in all essence, every convention is almost the same. You have your vendor hall, you have your panels, you have your fan gathering and stuff and whatnot. But it, you know, it's, it's very hyper specific because it's targeting a specific fandom. And if other anime cons, for example, uh, Comic Fiesta or Anime Gaki, those things are open wide to. But for Brony Conventions, it's just one. And then it shows you how awesome this show is. You get to see other people, like minded people who like the show. And that's very cool. You get to see people who have different interests in what you like. For example, you like people, you see people who like plush, you see people who like um, art, and you talk to them. And you get to know them and somehow make a friendship for them. So, the convention is fun. If you get a chance to go, you go. And, like, they're trying to promote Troncon, which is happening, what, next year? So, that one is in Canada, is it? I think it is. I think so, but if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, don't take my word for it. But, I'll read your book, Mr. Evans. But, you know, um, if you get a chance to go to any convention around the world and you have the funds for it, you go. It's fun. Young? Yeah? Oh, it's a question. Yes. yes. Um, is it hard to keep the podcast focused on the final movie after five years? Because like, the novelty has kind of dwindled, but you know, there's still like new episodes and content. How would I put this? Um, um, sorry, um, with the sorry, uh, having a very specific podcast, which is doing a show about My Little Pony, Friends with Magic. That, that, that if I were to do a show about My Little Pony in general, I have a lot to cover from G one to four and beyond. But my show is very hyper specific, and yes, that does get a little bit wavy from time to time. Where sometimes all my sorry, all of my news, I do get it from TV. There's other places, but I tend to trust TV more because of how family friendly it is. But sometimes, from one week to another, there's not much news that you can cover other than, hey, this week they're coming up with this toy. This toy is available on Amazon for pre-order. And most people have Amazon or eBay or, well, they do, but it's hard to access it. Then again, Amazon is coming to Singapore. Yeah, I give you you need to pay in dollars. Some people don't have that luxury of money. Oh, not really, because if you say eight dollars, that you um, I think you're mentioning the Amazon Prime. Is that what you mean? Something like that, but no, that's beside the point. But anyway, um, that's why my show has been split into two parts, which is news and reviews. And the review part is almost two to two again, which is okay, do everything for me and do everything what you want. And the what you want part is well, last. Uh, week before last. Yeah. The week before last. We talked about Kung Pao to the Fist. Does anybody remember that movie? Kung Pao to the Fist? No? I can't tell if you're lucky or unfortunate. <laughs> oh god, I watched it and it was like... I could just say that if you ever listen to the episode, you can just hear a whole hour talking about that normally is broken. Oh yeah, that was me and Silverbo quoting the movie for an hour while Norman tried not to pass out from laughing too hard. Oh yeah, that, that, that movie was fun. But another example is we talk about Destiny, the game. Well, Silverbo built it, I didn't. And then we talk about Overwatch and so on. So a bit of variety needs to be sparkled in. And if you see other reviewers, especially Silver, he does talk about other things on his channel, like. I forgot that one classic cartoon we did. But you can do a podcast about X, but 
don't do too much about why because your fans who watch you are watching for X. Sometimes it's a good spring on the side. So yeah. I'm still waiting for us to do a podcast about Payday 2. I've, I've been bugging about that for a year. Oh, yeah. I just want to throw in memes from the video game. <laughs> Payday 2, done by uh, Oak. Pretty fun, pretty fun. Yeah, except that there's a new one coming soon. Oh, yeah, because we haven't found anyone yet. Um, is there a question? The show floor is open. Any questions? If there's not, I think we can end it. You got a question? Alright. Uh, how long do you think you can maintain this show? Basically, it's, basically it's asking how long you can maintain. You maintain the show, keep on running this. How long will it be? Until well, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can't say when. No one knows how old Norman is. We're fairly sure he's immortal in this or permanently look like this. Oh, yeah. But uh, honestly, how long is how long will I have interest in this show? If I don't have any interest anymore, I might have to kill the show. No, kill the show is not good. I might have to end the show because I'm not invested in it anymore. But I have good people on. I have a lot of friends that I enjoy talking with. So I think we'll be on until I don't want to be on anymore. <laughs> Okay. Maybe ending with a big bang. Oh, maybe. You say we'll end on a big bang, I'll say we'll probably end on a fizzle. I uh, no, people won't have to drink for it. But I think the show, uh, considering the movies coming out and all the stuff they've been doing with the Crescio Girls uh, side franchise, I think we'll pro uh, the new show is probably going to have enough content coming out uh, to last a while at this point. I'm, I'm still adamant that we're going to get 10 seasons of the of the base show. Yeah, and I, I think that Expo doesn't want us to stop. They want us to keep going on and on and on and on. At least the most important thing about having a show or anything is most uh, just have fun. Oh yeah, That's what okay. you say. Like you mentioned earlier before, if you're not having fun, then stop because you're not invested in it. If you're having fun, then it could be a three-hour podcast talking about random stuff. No, it's kind of specific because it is knowing it's show now. Well, it doesn't have to be. Uh, on my channel, I interview content creators as a side thing, and on more than one occasion, especially with you, Norman, yeah. we got so wrapped up in having fun with the interview that instead of being about thirty minutes long. Their recording is an hour and 15 minutes long. I thought that was supposed to be a quiet thing. Yeah, the, 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 review, uh, the interview episode's only meant to suppose to be about 20 to 30 minutes long. But yeah, we kind of lost track of time. Oh yeah, I remember that one. You need to post that up, by the way. Question. <laughs> I haven't even finished doing that for my own channel, so I'll, I'll give it a shot. I, I covered season six, part one, which was the first half, which was good, and then the second half came out, and since I haven't bothered to do that, I think the second half of it probably wasn't as great. The finale was fantastic, but it was what an a season that started off quite strong and kind of mellowed out about halfway through and didn't really give us a lot of great moments. It's still better than season five though. Uh, as for, yeah, this question first. Um, as for me, I have to say that season six was a little faster. It went out with the king out strong, but it didn't have that gas because from what I noticed that most of the writers for season six were kind of new. So they're trying to get their roof on, like, okay, we need to do something with something, so how do we do it? If you were to see a season two, the writers were, oh, we know what to do, this is this and that is that. And like I said, season six, it was okay, but it was not strong. 
Right. Well, my opinion regarding the season six is that it's it was not bad in the beginning, but after a while, it's like he was in a sense that it's kind of predictable because I have a bad habit sometimes when I watch the show in like ten minutes, I was like, you know what, something like this might have happened. In some in certain ways, it may plot twist, but it but it not but it's not like seriously plot twist, but it's like brain mellow and something you can just like huh. So my prediction is something. I'm like, right. It's kind of annoying because I kind of don't want to feel like the things is like going in what I think is like going in that what kind of way. saving Equestria and then the characters just sort of decide to go their own ways, stay friends but the central group that they have uh, becomes split up and they go off to live on their own uh, different areas of Equestria. Uh, the Apple family stays on their farm, Twilight goes back to camp a lot, Rarity cries in the corner somewhere like always, uh, Fluttershy disappears into a forest, uh, Pinkie Pie explodes. <laughs> Loves uh, Freddyville with cotton candy somehow. Uh, Rainbow Dash, uh, I, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the, the CMC obviously go with their, their, their respective families, Apple Blue Saves with Applejack. Uh, Apple Blue Saves with Applejack. Sweetie Belle goes with uh, goes with Apple Blue Saves with Applejack. Sweetie Belle goes with us, uh, tries to come to Rarity. And Skooloo goes with Tokyo Fried Chicken that makes the biggest mistake of her life. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So. If, if you ask me how I would end the show, I would ask that. What is Hasbro planning? Because if they're planning on uh, another split in terms of, oh, okay, the main six are full, we need to sell new toys. Or, oh, right, the CMCs are there, they're expanding. Okay, we'll end. Them, we end the main show and we'll read to them 4.5 the CMC and now they're the main characters and they're eventually a new yay CMC marketing power. So, so I would say end the show with a bang and have a uh, uh, yes a single generation. generation. Uh, that, that we should hope they come yeah. I don't call it <laughs> so if they end the main cast storyline and go four, four, generation 4.5 and follow a different set of characters in the same universe maybe the background characters yes derpy we need we need the derpy spin-off with uh Caratop, who I, whatever happened to Caratop? she was there with derpy all the time in season one through and then disappeared yeah but that's my idea like Hasbro is all about making the money, so they're not going to end something that's good. So they're going to keep going for a bit and try to expand whatever they can and make new stories. My, my idea may be possibly be what I hear before on the NBA show, maybe something like of a creep, the old script of the NLP way by maybe somehow Prince, uh, Princess Celest uh, Celestia retires or Luna retires and then Maybe Twilight or Kaden just go on the throne, just continue reigning the Equestria, it's just kind of that. But for the other characters, maybe they, like what Twilight said, maybe split off in their own ways. And Pinkie Pie may be the most successful, what you call it, just like Tea Sandwich, the most successful party throwing characters or something. I would so, also send Starlight off to the Equestria Ghost franchise so I can have my Shim Sham and my Gloomy Land all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a, oh yeah, I forgot we had that. 
So technically, the show will never end. Chris Curry goes, also known as Quest Curry White Boots. So, anywho, I think we are on. On time, yeah. Yeah, so we're on time. So, yeah, thank you very much for coming to the panel. I have this whole outro thing that I always read on the script, so give me a second to open the mic up. As scripted? Yes. Oh, you just oh. memorized it. <laughs> oh, I, I used to memorize it, but yeah. Uh, if you guys still have any questions or search or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mvsearchingmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show today on this edited show, I am at Norman Sanzo. Fine. Uh, I can be found on YouTube and Facebook under Double Pint Productions. I can be found on Twitter at midnight underscore pint. And I can be found on Dim Fiction and DeviantArt as Twilight Genesis. Uh, as for me, I am Angelico XX on the internet where I tend to post pictures of my plushies. And yes, it, this plush that I have and the two sweet bell and apple blue which was on the Michel Kriebel's table. Yes, that was mine. And I have a lot of plushies. Okay. Alrighty then. And yeah. also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. Like our Facebook page. Yes, we do have a Facebook page. And you can also get a sound from you, but I've got some things are in the show notes, you can check them out. And we do this thing called the English Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. So if you would like to see what you think about certain episodes or review of movies, do catch one, do subscribe to that. Because Silver Quill is on, Stephen Carson is on, and probably you'll get a guest of the week, who knows, maybe. Well, it's not much of a surprise to say, oh, maybe we'll have Twy when we said I'm on two episodes already and I'm going to be on most of September. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Star, he'll come, probably. Um, and also, we have, uh, also, if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the show. We have your support, you'll get full access to the different content and exclusive, and also early access to the initial review and discussion podcast. And well, with every thank you, uh, with every support you get, thank you. And okay, well, thank you. I like to thank Virgil Cat, Star, Phylogenesis, and Victorious, Star Spring, and Star Light, and also. Jeff, yes. You scripted everything but everyone to thank. <laughs> what does it say? But anyway, I am Roman Sando. I have been Twilight Genesis. And this is Star Stream. And we'll guys see you probably next year. I see you moving on. Then I'll be again next year. <laughs> yeah. Well, on the panel. Team Photocon 2.0, MBS Show actually figures out what they're doing. Team Photocon 2, like, shoot me, dude. Shoot me, dude. Shoot me, dude.